Thank you once again for joining us here on Antrim Apostolic Church Digital Service on Sunday, the 7th of February, 2021. It's hard to believe we're moving into another week and we know we're going to be blessed this morning as we come together. Uh, this has been a week within our church of prayer and fasting across the whole of the nation and we've been praying for the prodigals, we've been praying and giving God thanks, we've been praying and praying for our nation, we've been praying for healing, we've been praying for different things all week. And I know we're going to be blessed this morning as God reaches out through this digital medium to bless others. Our sister Liz Wilson is going to share the thought that the Lord has laid on her heart this morning. Our brother Martin Ferguson is going to read us around the Lord's table. We're going to worship God together. We're going to hear from God's word. We're going to close in worship of our sister uh, Miriam and uh, Caroline as they lead us in praise and worship as well to bring our service to a close. You know, when I was thinking that we're into another month, We've already passed the first month of 2021. It reminds me that time goes so quickly and we can put things off. We can procrastinate, as they say, and delay decisions in life. But you know, God is calling us now. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. And I believe this morning, as we hear from God's word, God's going to be speaking to you and calling to you. And as you hear the thought that Liz shares with you, I pray that you'll open your heart up to receive from God as he speaks to you. So I'm just going to hand over to Liz now just to share her thought with you this morning. May God bless you. Good morning, everyone. My dad was a whistler. Now, he wasn't your ordinary run of the mill whistler. My dad whistled his tunes uh, in what I would call a twiddly diddly way. There were lots of lilts and tilts to his whistling. And I have to say that as a little girl, it was a joy to listen to him whistling very happily around the home. Now, I couldn't whistle to save my life. And I'm going to give you all a little demonstration. <whistles> Sorry to have to put you through that, but I have to say that was my very best effort. And as you can see, I didn't take after my dad. But I just recently learned that someone else whistles. And to be honest, I never imagined him whistling, but he does. Do you know who he is? God. In Zechariah 10 and verse 8, it says, I will whistle for them and gather them, for I will redeem them and they shall increase as they once increased. Isaiah 5 and 26 says, and he will whistle to them from the end of the earth. Surely they shall come with speed quickly. And there are more references to God whistling. Now God's whistle wasn't a tune like my dad's whistle was. What we're talking about here is God's calling whistle. But whistles are used in many ways and have many different functions in life. Some that come to mind, for example, a train whistle. A train whistle blows out a warning as it's coming along the tracks, just in case it needs to alert and to ensure that if anyone is somehow on those tracks, they need to get off them and to move really quickly. Referees also use whistles in sport. If someone commits a foul on a football field, the referee blows his whistle and the offending person may well be sent off or so, uh, uh, someone from the opposite team may get a free kick of the ball. Dog handlers control their dogs with whistles that usually only the dog can hear. Car alarms make a screeching whistling noise alerting us to whatever the problem is. And also a loud shrill whistle can be used for our own personal safety and protection. To help to frighten or ward off a would-be attacker or to as a call for help. I have also observed that in the workplace when someone whistles, it usually signifies that they're happy at their work. You know, when I read that scripture about God whistling to call his people, it brought a lovely childhood memory back to me. When I was a little girl, I used to play in the street with my friends and sometimes we would go to a nearby field, maybe to play ball or some other game. 
Then if it was dinner time, Aunt Si, we were out of earshot of our mother, earshot of our mother's voices. Sometimes our dads would do a loud whistle for us. And you know, we as children usually recognised our own dad's whistles and head at home. Have you heard or recognised your father God's whistle? Have you heard him calling you to repentance? It is in our best interest to pay attention and to take heed when we hear God's whistle. God only ever wants the best for us, for you and for me. And it's his will that everyone should come to repentance and accept his offer of salvation. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 God is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and have the gift of eternal life. When I heard my dad's whistle, I knew it was time to go home, to a place of love, comfort, protection and safety, and yes, sometimes a place of correction. God calls us to our heavenly home, where we are loved with an everlasting love. No matter how sinful, wicked or bad you may think you are, the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you from all sin and unrighteousness. Accepting Christ as our Saviour ensures us the forgiveness of a holy God and the promise of spending eternity with our Lord Jesus Christ. All we have to do is respond to his whistle whatever form that whistle may take and accept his free offer of salvation. Amen. Good morning and welcome this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I'm just listening to this hymn, which I can proudly say I was, I have, that's me playing on my keyboard. One of the things I've been trying to learn in lockdown, you know. But you know, that hymn has a word from God to each and every one of us this morning. Nearer my God to thee. And I believe as we come round the Lord's table this morning, it is important 
to stay close to God. You know, the Bible says that our God is omnipresent. That means that he's ever present with us. And even though, you know, at times we don't sense his presence, because God reveals and God conceals himself, but it doesn't mean that he's not there. And there are times when I went through darkness and despair of my life, and you know, I didn't only when I look back, I can see the unseen hand of the eternal God has been there all the time. You know, when those disciples were walking along the Mass Road and they seen Jesus crucified, you know, and they were discussing how tragic this was. The Bible says Jesus drew near. And I hope my prayer this morning to come around this table as if Jesus will draw near to thee. And he not just reveal himself as the crucified one. As you know, that's what this table is all about. The, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, not just the life but the death. But he's risen. He's risen this morning. You know, we're not just doing this in remembrance of him, but we're doing it because he's ever present with it. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink a cup and eat the bread, you do so until I come. What a hope this morning. And our blessed Lord is coming back. Let's go round this table this morning. First Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which I deliver unto ye. The Lord Jesus, the same night and when he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he broke it, he gave thanks and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Amen. Praise the Lord. After the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, he said, This cup is a New Testament in my blood. This day as it of me you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he what? Till he comes this morning. So we have this wonderful assurance this morning that when we come round this table, and if you know Jesus as your own and personal Saviour, you have this blessed hope this morning. Not just a partaker of the life and redemption through the death, but the blessed hope of his coming again. Soon and very soon, we will see him. Yes, to him, near my God today. Hallelujah. He's closer than you realize. The Bible says, you know, seek ye the Lord where he may be found and call upon him while he is near. May God bless you in this coming day. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Oh.
author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the each other as you would pray for yourself and praise him for his faithfulness because there is power in prayer.
As we come around God's Word today, I want to share a verse with you that is probably pretty well known, one we've heard probably shared over many occasions, but just by way of text to set the theme for what, the thoughts I want to share with you today. It's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. That verse probably has been very apt over this last year, for we want to, we would love to see our land healed of this pandemic and all the situations that's going on there. But in the context of the verse, it says, If my people who are called will humble themselves and pray. Prayer is what I want to talk about today. What exactly is prayer? It's one of those strange things where we, we as human beings dare to talk to God. Because that's what prayer really is, isn't it? It's talking to God. It's saying, God, this is how I feel. This is what's going on with me. And the interesting thing for us as God's people is that God wants us to pray. He wants us to talk. And one of the things that I've heard many uh, people say over this last number of weeks and months in this last year, that during this process of lockdown, many more people have been spending time in prayer than ever before. Because prayer is something that's a, uh, that, that when we don't know where else to turn, we turn to God. It's, it's amazing how when we're in difficulty, our prayer life increases. In fact, Isaiah in uh, the book of Isaiah in chapter 26, 16 says this, Lord, in trouble they have visited you, they pour out their prayer when your chastening upon, is upon them. In other words, when we're in difficulties, when we're in hard times, that's when we start to pray. But you know, God wants us to be in prayer all the time. In fact, the Bible tells us to be prayer without ceasing. The reason why I came to this topic today was over this last week, as you, some of you may well know, and may have seen on our Facebook pages and on the Apostolic Church UK's Facebook page, this has been a week of prayer and fasting. And we've been praying for many different things over this last week. We've been praying for the prodigal sons that have gone away. We've been praying for healing. We've been praying for our leaders. We've been praying for our nation. We've been praying for lots of different things over this last few weeks, culminating in tonight in a, in a United Prayer Meeting on Zoom across the UK, which you can register for if you follow the details on the Apostolic Church UK we website and, or Facebook page. You'll find out how to register for that there, where we can be praying together as God's people. So what exactly is prayer and how does it benefit us? This was the thoughts that I had around this when I was thinking of what you want to be sure of. We've been praying all week, but what does that actually mean for us? What does it mean for someone who maybe doesn't even know God? What is prayer? Prayer is something that, that we, we humbly come and, and ask God. It is amazing, as I said earlier, that even those who don't know what to do when nothing else will succeed when they're in difficulties and distress, then they call upon the Lord. I know in my own life as a young man, I went through some very difficult situations and I wasn't with God, but at that stage I was calling on God to help me because of the, the dire place I was in. And God reached in. You see, God hears us. In fact, His Word says to us that when we call on Him, He reaches in. In Acts it says, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when we come and call on God, when we pray to God, we find that, that we can know His presence. The psalmist is constantly saying, Lord, hear my prayer. You read through the, the book of, of Psalms, you'll hear, you'll see in that, in that book in the Bible, the psalmist constantly saying, hear my prayer. Lord, give ear to me. The Lord has answered my prayer. You see, I want to remind you today that God wants to hear from you. God wants to hear your heart. Okay, he's an all-seeing, all-knowing God. He knows how you feel. He knows who you are. But he wants a relationship with you. Man was created for fellowship, for relationship with God, we're told in Genesis. When Adam and Eve were created, we were created with that relationship with God. And prayer really is that communication line to God. Many years ago, I remember Pastor David Cook was sharing with the young people in the church, and he says, prayer is the breath of a Christian. Prayer is the breath of our relationship to God. And when we, when we don't pray, we don't have any life. 
we need to be in a place where we talk to God. And you may say, well, nobody understands me. How can I talk to God? I can't. God hears all the time. Psalm 8 reminds us that He's mindful of us. He's mindful of you. He's mindful of me. But He wants us to communicate with Him. Many of us have things we pray for. Often they're things we want or desire. And in this last year, as I said, many people say their prayer life has increased because we're praying for loved ones who are sick. We're praying for people who are grieving. We're praying for situations and circumstances. We're praying that this lockdown will end. We're praying that normality will come back. And there doesn't seem to be any end of it because it doesn't seem to matter what the governments do. We thank God that God is answering and that the vaccinations are taking place and that things are, are moving in the right direction. But it's God who's sovereign in all these things. He loves us in spite of our faults and our feelings. And he says all who can call upon him will be saved. And so I want to encourage you to increase your prayer life today, to talk to God, because God's listening for you. Prayer is at the heart of everything that we have in life. The book of Philippians tells us, bring all things to God in prayer and supplication, and then the peace of God that pass all understanding guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. One of the problems we have is when we bottle up all our problems, when we bottle up all our troubles, when we try to hold them in and the emotions that they have, they affect us psychologically. As many of you know, for years I've worked in psychiatry and one of the things that you often find is people are disturbed because they're carrying around inside them all the emotions and troubles and strifes and difficulties in their heart and in their mind and there's no let up from it. And sometimes we find it hard to tell someone else. Because we might be ashamed of something we've done. We might be so upset and angry we don't know how to say it. And here's the good news. God says just come to me as you are. He's not asking you to come a dress for an appointment. He's not asking you to come in a suit, a shirt, a tie. He's not asking you to come in a certain way. He's just saying come. Come to me. Bring your burdens to me. Lay them at the foot of the cross. Tell me all about it. When we bring our prayer and supplication unto God, he says that he brings peace to our hearts. The Lord allows us to unburden ourselves. I can say things to my Heavenly Father and to Jesus that he knows already. You see, you're not going to shock God. Sometimes whenever I've been working over the years, I've come across people as a, both as a pastor and as a, a mental health nurse. And many times I've come across people and they've told me things that and I'm trying to fight back the shock and the emotion because what they have shared with me has been really difficult for them. And I'm, I'm just amazed at how they're still standing or how they're still living and what they've come through. The difference is when we tell God, He already knows. The shock isn't there. And yet He loves us just as we are. And how can I prove that to you today? Because the very fact that Jesus went to the cross tells us that He loves us. The very fact that Jesus went to the cross tells us that he wants you and I to be able to speak to him and have a relationship with him. In the Old Testament, and you find this in the book of Hebrews, in the Old Testament, and the writer of Hebrews reminds us of us in chapters 3 to uh, 8, 9, 10, of how that in the Old Testament the priests had to go in every year to, play, to pay an atonement offering for the sins of the nation so that we could ask God for forgiveness, that we could talk to God. So they would go in to pay the sacrifice so that you can come into God's presence to speak to him. And it had to be done again and again and again. But Jesus came to take our sins upon his shoulders. And the writer in Hebrews reminds us that he died once for all. So that we can come into God's presence. We can have a conversation with him. We can tell him who we are. We can call on his name and we can be saved. As we heard in the passage we read from Acts earlier. So you might have problems and difficulties in anyone. How can I come to God? I don't know. All God said, call upon the name of Jesus. Come into his presence and allow God to bring his blessing in. He longs to hear your prayers, to hear your cry. So what is prayer? Is it a list of our problems and our supplications? Going, oh God, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? It's more than that. It's a communication. It's 
where we get to tell God how wonderful He is. In fact, uh, it's often said that the highest form of prayer is actually worship. When we tell God how He is, when we're worshiping, when we're singing, you know, we get to give God the glory. But not only that, it's just not just that worshiping end of it, there's the caring end of it, where God listens to the beat of our heart, where God wipes away our tears. The old hymn writer said, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our pains and griefs to bear. Jesus comes to bear your griefs and your pain. And you know, in the middle of this lockdown period, when we're stuck in our houses and not, maybe not out as much as we have been, and this year's been very difficult, and you think nobody understands how, what I'm going through, or who I am, or what's happening to me, God knows. And God says, pour out how you're feeling to me. And he will pour in his strength and his love. You might say, well, I don't really believe in God. I got news for you, that even in praying to God and unburdening yourself to him, will psychologically have an impact on you, even if you don't believe in God. The fact that you get to pour out exactly how you're feeling, God is listening. And it will have an impact and bring you a sense of peace. I want you to call upon the Lord and taste and see that the Lord is good as the psalmist says. We need to come in to his presence. To know that he's there for us. You know, the Lord wants to bless us. The psalmist says, the Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him in truth. In other words, when we come with a an open heart to God, when we come with a, a, a genuine heart, saying, Father God, help me here. He comes into our very beings and our experience. And when we come in prayer, we can ask anything in His name and it shall be done. Jesus told us that in the Scriptures, if you ask anything in my name, it shall be done that the Father might be glorified. As I was thinking upon prayer over this week, you know, you start to realize how often prayer was important in Scripture. I mean, if you look right back in the Old Testament, you find there Samuel was praying, you find David praying, and many of the Psalms that he wrote, he's saying, I call upon you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, you've heard my prayer. We, we see the, the, the children of Israel often praying unto God and asking God for guidance and blessing. And when you move into the New Testament, you see there, you see Anna who prayed in the temple for 70 years to see the Saviour being born. You see how John the Baptist would have been out in the wilderness praying and asking God. You see Jesus praying. But more importantly, you see the power of prayer. You see how when people prayed, things happened. And in the early church, in the book of Acts, you see God moving in prayer. When they were up in the upper room praying, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they were empowered and poured out onto the street and spoke in new tongues and told others about the greatness of God. And Peter starts to preach. That started in prayer. You see James, or Peter and John going to the, the beautiful gate of the temple and they pray for this lame man and his, his joints healed and the miraculous healing takes place. Healing flows. We see the, the believers praying together uh, in one accord and it's saying that the whole place where they were was shaken and the God fell upon them. We see Peter being kept, being kept in chains and them praying and the angels releasing him. And he knocks at the door and the prayer meeting was still going on whenever he was released. We see Paul in the Philippian jail, him and Silas praying and praising God and their chains fell off as they prayed. Prayer moves the hand of God, the scripture tells us. And this morning I want to encourage you just to, to pray, to start to call upon the Lord. Whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian, I'm encouraging you to pray and come in the name of Jesus and let the Lord into your life because you will find the peace that passes all understanding when you unburden your heart to God. But more importantly, you will find the miraculous power of God moving in our lives. And as Christians today and those who know Jesus, I want to encourage you to keep praying. Because when we come together in prayer, God's hand moves. And the Lord wants to heal this nation. We read it at the very start of this, this little sermon that I'm sharing with you around prayer today. If we come in prayer and humble ourselves before God and turn from our wicked ways, He will hear us from heaven and will come and heal our land. We need a healing in our land, don't we? We need God to come and, and heal.
heal all the problems. We need God to come not just to heal the coronavirus, but to heal the broken relationships, to heal the sick. We know that the Lord can do this, but it starts in prayer. Because prayer is an act of faith. When we pray, we pray in faith. We declare in the name of Jesus and we ask in prayer. There's an element of faith involved in prayer. When you ask for something, there's faith in it. You know, when you go to this, the, the shop or the chemist and you go and you ask them for you're having faith that they have it in the cupboards and they can give it to you. There's an element of faith there. When we come in prayer to God, it's a faith exercise. And Hebrews says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. So we need to be in this place of prayer and realizing that God is there for us. He wants you to increase your prayer time. He wants me to increase my prayer time. He wants a conversation with us. When Paul talks about praying without ceasing, he's talking about an ongoing relationship with the Father. He's talking about an ongoing relationship with the Father through the Son. An ongoing relationship with the Father through the Son, anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit, bringing life and peace and blessing into our lives. And so, as we have been coming through this week of prayer and fasting with the church, I started to, to want to bring a few thoughts this morning around prayer. And I want to encourage you to start to pray more. And if you don't know the Lord this morning, call upon His name and you shall be saved. When we start to pray, God reaches in. I can tell you as a young man when I was going through those difficult situations and I'm not going into the situations because they weren't good and I don't like to look back on them but they were really bad. I asked the Lord and He delivered me. He brought me out of them. And He's the same God today. And if you have difficult situations or circumstances, ask the Lord and He'll bring you through them. And here's the thing, He'll do it sometimes in such a way you'll not even realize it till it's actually done. God is such an amazing God. The chains fall off. People get healed. Circumstances are changed. He gives us a peace in the midst of the storm. We're in the midst of a storm right now with the pandemic that's around us. We're in the midst of difficulties. But you can have a peace in your heart today as you pray and ask the Lord into your life and into all those areas. And I pray that it's not just for difficult times that you'll ask God. We'll not be like the people that is talked about in Isaiah who just call upon the Lord and pray to Him when things are difficult. God wants an ongoing relationship with you. That's why Jesus came to the cross. That's why Jesus made the way for you to come into His presence through the power of His blood. You don't have to wait for a sin offering. The sin offering has been made in Jesus Christ. And as you avail in His name, You'll come into the Father's presence and you'll know His peace. You'll know His strength. You'll know Him moving in your life. So I want to encourage you today to continue to pray. Tonight we'll be praying online. You'll find the details on the, on the Apostolic Church UK page. I'll also put them on the Antrim page for you that you can go and, and register with uh, our Sunny Hill Church to get a Zoom link if you want to join in prayer in that. But I want to encourage you to be there and pray together. Because God moves when His people pray together. When there's a unity in prayer, when we come in one accord, the Lord moves. Because He honours faith. And collective faith moves mountains. And so God wants us to be a faithful people. Faithful in all we do. And especially in our prayer time. Do you know the wonderful thing about praying to God? It's not always uh, just asking for stuff. Sometimes it's just saying, Lord, this is how I'm feeling. Lord, this is what's going on with me. It's that intimate relationship that's at the heart of prayer. Although God already knows, He loves us to tell Him. We just as, you know, when parents come home, when, when a child comes home from school, you know, you want to know, how was their day? How did, they, how did your children get on? How were they coping at school? How was the situation? You want to know how they're doing. Our Father wants to know how we're doing. And He wants us to talk to Him. He wants you to talk to Him. He wants to come in and sup with you and be with you and bring you peace and joy and strength and remove the burdens from you. I pray that you'll come to that place where you will call upon the Lord and you'll know His grace and His mercy surrounding you. 
And at church today, as we come together in prayer, I believe that God wants to pour healing into the nation. But we've got to come in prayer, humbly before the Lord, and seek His face, turning from our wicked ways, that He will heal our nation. So let's come before the Lord, and let's pray. I'm just going to pray with you right now. Father, we thank you for this wonderful gift of prayer that has been given to us through the work of the cross. We don't have to wait for the sin offering. We call on the name of Jesus and in the power of that precious name and that anointing that comes through the work of the cross. We thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. You're hearing each prayer this morning or everyone is calling upon you. You know the different needs, those that are praying for those that are sick, those that are praying for those that are lost, those that are praying for relationships that are broken, those that are praying for circumstances that they're finding difficult, those that are praying for a way forward at this time. Father, we thank you that your grace and your mercy is flowing, Lord, as we call on your name, because your heart is towards those who call upon you. And so, Lord, we thank you right now that we have this privilege of prayer where we can unburden our hearts and we can lay our burdens down at Calvary. So Holy Spirit, I pray for your peace to enclose around everyone who's listening today. I pray, Lord, for your strength, Lord, for each heart, Lord, for you know the things that they struggle with right now. You know the things that they need to lay down at your feet. And Lord, I thank you that as we come in prayer, you will heal our nation. And you will pour your spirit out upon it. Lord, we thank you for this even now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you know the Lord has given us good things. He's made it a great, great way for us. He's brought victory into our lives. And we're going to close our service this morning by worshipping God. I'm going to ask Caroline and Marine just to lead us in a closing song. It's a happy day that God has blessed us. And this song says happy day. So God bless you this morning and enjoy the ministry as we come to a close.